Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Ranking Member Katko. And uh, first, I'd also like to thank all of our witnesses for coming before the committee today. And I'm glad we're finally having the ability to dis seriously discuss the threats we're facing, particularly along our southwest border. And let me also say that prior to January 20th, 2021, we had lawful operational control of the southern border. The number of unaccompanied alien children, UACs, continue uh, encountered along the southwest border has nearly doubled since 2019 and continues to increase, surpassing a record high in fiscal year 2021, approaching nearly 153,000 this fiscal year. We've heard reports of children being sent alone. I've encountered them um, when I've made trips to the border across dangerous terrain with nothing but a relative's name and address pinned on their shirt, some of these children so young as to not know their own uh, name or to whom they're supposed to uh, be sent. We've seen Border Patrol agents bravely fight to save young kids and infants in medical distress and in crossing the river. And when we've encountered these families, and I distinctly remember an occasion with uh, Representative Carlos Jimenez and Representative Maria Salazar, who spoke their language, asking them specifically whether or not the Biden administration's policies, often cited directly by these migrants crossing the border, encourage foreign nationals to send their children to seek entry into the United States despite dire conditions at the border. Secretary Mayorkas, are the Biden administration's policies encouraging and increasing the pull factor for unaccompanied minors, UACs, to come into this country? Congresswoman, a few thoughts, if I may. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for uh, capturing the vulnerability of un unaccompanied children uh, that migrate from their countries of origin and seek a, a, a um, safety, uh, not only in the United States, but elsewhere in the hemisphere, as I said at the very outset. Um, and um, I don't Sir, know. Sir, I want to be respectful. I have limited yes, time. So that this is a challenge that we are experiencing throughout the hemisphere. I also want to thank you for uh, recognizing the bravery of the Border Patrol. Thank you very much. I'm going to relate back to my instances of appearing at the border and hearing directly from people crossing the border that the administration's policies, in fact, are a pull factor. What, given that, what actions are being taken at the department to keep these kids safe, safe and stem the flow of unaccompanied, stem the flow of UACs crossing illegally into the United States across dangerous terrain? So, so a few things. Of, of course, I, I disagree with the premise uh, um, of the pull factor. Uh, and as I was um, saying, this is a hemispheric uh, challenge. We're seeing a tremendous amount of upheaval throughout the Western Hemisphere, authoritarian regimes, poverty, violence, corruption, uh, and the like. We are doing a number of things. And let me give you two examples. One is we're taking it to the smugglers in an unprecedented way. Uh, throughout the Department of Homeland Security, throughout the interagency, and with our, our partner uh, countries to the south of our border. We have, uh, in the last year, um, uh, conducted more than 6,000 arrests in an unprecedented disruption effort to attack the smuggling organizations that seek to exploit the vulnerable. Thank you. And uh, two, I, I can just say that it, when two, I've been to the border and talked with the agents, uh, the, uh, the cartels seem to have tremendous control over yes. what happens. If I may, after being, just, I, Sir, I, I only have one minute and 16 seconds left. After being apprehended by the DHS, unaccompanied alien children are transferred to the Office of Refugee Resettlement within the Department of Health and Human Services. While this is supposed to occur within 72 hours of arrival, decrease in the amount of time children reside in CBP uh, facilities, many unaccompanied children have remained in CBC facilities longer than the time allotted under federal law. Is the large scale of UACs crossing the border contributing to these overstays in CBC facilities, and how is this being addressed, number one? Number two, how is the DHS managing the threat of sexual predators at the border during CBT facility detentions, as well as during the transfer of children to different locations. And if you don't have time to answer, you can respond to us. Uh, uh, Congresswoman, um, uh, we're also building lawful pathways, such as a Central American Minors Program, so children do not place, um, and their parents do not place their lives in the hands of exploitative smugglers. The information that you have with respect to the length of stay in a Border Patrol facility is um, uh, I think uh, quite dated. Uh, that was certainly a challenge that we faced in March of 2021, but we have taken considerable measures uh, to meet the 72-hour 
uh, timeframe, and I look forward to providing you with further information. Thank you so much, Mr. Chair. I yield my time.